Uh, I'm the president of the Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment, and that's a group of healthcare professionals, most of them are physicians. There are about 300 of us in the state of Utah. We're actually probably the largest uh, civic organization of healthcare professionals in the state of Utah, and maybe even in uh, much of the western United States. So we're actually getting called on to, to uh, engage in issues of pollution in other states, including California. Um, so this is our latest Christmas uh, photograph. We first bought the leaders in carpooling. <laughs> now, if you wanted to know what air pollution does to public health, probably the easiest way to think of this is air pollution, uh, at least if you're living in Salt Lake City, has about the same amount of chronic health consequences if you live with an active smoker. And that's about 25% of the effect of this if you're doing the smoking yourself. So, in Salt Lake City, it's a fairly big deal. Now, it's a little less so here in Park City, but not perhaps as much as you would think. Uh, because in the medical literature is very solid. Thousands of studies now send this basic message in the last 10 years. In the same way that there's no safe number of cigarettes that you can smoke, there's really no safe amount of air pollution you can breathe. So even if Park City has air quality that meets national standards, that doesn't mean you're not having an effect. And in particular, what we now know are that the health risks are really systemic. They're not just limited to the lungs. They can affect every single organ, every single artery, every single tiny arteriole, and any, any cell in your body. So that's a real concern. If you look at it underneath the microscope and think this particulate matter that you can breathe in can penetrate any cell in your body, that's a real concern. Air pollution contributes to four of the five leading causes of death, which are strokes and heart attacks, lung disease, and cancer. The only one it may not contribute to is trauma. One important thought is that not all our air pollution is created equal. Uh, some types of air pollution are definitely more toxic than others. This particular photograph has the refinery in the background because when certain chemicals are attached to that, those tiny particles, like PAHs, which is an acronym for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, that's the group of compounds that the mother compound of which is benzene. When those kinds of chemicals are attached to that particulate matter, then the toxicity is significantly more elevated, and refinery pollutions have a lot more PAHs attached to them than, say, a lot of other sources of particulate matter. The reason why the Kennecott copper mine is in the backdrop here is because tiny fragments of metals can be attached to that particulate matter, and when, is, when that's the case, the toxicity is also significantly enhanced. Now, one of the reasons why uh, you perhaps may not want to focus too much on thinking that you're better off than Salt Lake City is because there's an awful lot of wood burning here in Park City. Wood smoke is one of the most toxic types of air pollution that there is. There are about 200 of the most toxic chemicals known to science uh, incorporated in wood smoke uh, emissions. The EPA has estimated that wood smoke is about 12 times the cancer risk of secondhand cigarette smoke on an equal volume uh, comparison. They've also calculated that the free radicals in wood smoke are actually biologically active for as long as 40 times longer than the free radicals in cigarette smoke. The biological damage is somewhat proportional to how uh, long those free radicals are active. And then finally, the particles are extremely small for wood smoke, meaning they can be inhaled deeply into the lungs, which is part of the reason why it's a problem in the first place, and they can also seep into other people's homes almost seamlessly. So wood burning is a particularly uh, serious component of most communities' air pollution problem, and it is a serious problem here in, in Park City. Now, just briefly, what does air pollution does to, to some of the uh, organ systems? You, you can intuitively accept the fact that air pollution affects the lungs. This is a non-smoker's lungs. Those black dots are not normal. Those are black dots from someone who's been breathing air pollution all their life. A lot of these particles never exit. They build up in the lungs, and those black dots represent carbonations build up over years and years and years. Um, you would rather not have that if you had a choice. Virtually every lung disease that we know of is either exacerbated or caused by air pollution, and uh, asthma in particular, and all kinds of hospitalizations related to respiratory diseases are increased in populations of pre-born air pollution. 
Uh, and in particular, children who grow up with air pollution actually can have a stunning of their lung growth so that they never actually develop their full adult lung capacity. Air pollution affects the heart and the blood vessels. Um, this particular graph is very illustrative of a very important point. On the lower axis, there are concentrations of particular pollution. On the y-axis going up are, is the signature outcome of air pollution exposure, which is a sudden death. You can see from that graph that as soon as you get any air pollution at all, you're getting increased rates of sudden death. Well, that's in part because we now know that air pollution actually elevates blood pressure almost immediately upon exposure. Rates of strokes and heart attacks increase with literally in a matter of hours. And in fact, uh, we see this inflammatory response that's kicked up in the arteries that really doesn't abate for as long as 30 days afterwards. Looking at studies published by the American Heart Association, we calculate as many as 2,000 people die in Utah every year prematurely because of the air pollution. In recent years, we found out air pollution actually affects the functioning of the brain, especially the developing, the, the, the development of the brain in children and in uh, embryonic development. This is a slide that shows, in fact, in animals, you can demonstrate that their individual brain cells have less complexity, less branches, uh, less bulbs, if you will, if the animals grow up breathing more air pollution. And they, we have clinical correlations uh, from studies like from the Harvard School of Public Health that show that if children breathe more air pollution, they actually have lower IQs. Um, you can think of it as in Utah, every, every child is left behind um, if they have to breathe air pollution. There are now four studies that correlate, make significant correlations between the rates of autism and air pollution exposure. Air pollution accelerates the aging process by shortening telomeres, which are the repeating sequences of chromosomes on the end of uh, strands of chromosomes that keep them from unraveling. Uh, their chromosomes can only divide so many times before they can't do it anymore, and air pollution shortens the length of the telomeres on the ends of those chromosomes, limiting the number of times that they can actually divide. These are all the kinds of pregnancy outcomes that we know occur at higher rates amongst a population that breathes more air pollution, virtually every pregnancy complication you can think of. And one of the most disturbing thoughts is that most of the 40,000 women who are pregnant in Utah at any one moment in time will have unfortunately had to spend maybe as much as a few weeks during critical months of development breathing air pollution that we officially declare as toxic. That's why this is really a public health emergency. <laughs> air pollution has recently been uh, declared to be a carcinogen by the World Health Organization. These are all the cancers that are known to be associated with higher levels of air pollution. Um, and in fact, in the last few years, we've now got a robust amount of medical research that shows there is a distinct correlation between rates of type 2 diabetes, obesity, and air pollution. Um, and I don't know why my last slide. I I, my last slide was a shirtless Vladimir uh, Putin, and I think the thought process was maybe Utah could solve their air pollution problem by militarily invading Nevada, where there's really no air pollution, then annex Nevada, use them as our denominator where there's no pollution, then we drop our pollution levels in half just by annexing Nevada. So, 